Hello and welcome to another episode of Stuck in a Side Quest. Um, we're going to be talking about D&D creation. Character creation. Sorry. Uh, 5E, to be specific, because I don't know any other D&D additions on how to create characters. Um... Yeah, let's just let's just get into it. Here's the, you guys are whatever it's going on. First thing you want to do, <laughs> you, you want to choose your species or race. All right, now race is what they used to use, and now they're like converting over to species, which I don't care. I get why they're doing it. Um, and I'm gonna do mainly like the PHB, which is the Player's Handbook races and stuff. There's a plethora of races. What are some of y'all's favorite races to play? Goliath. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, Leonin. Okay. This dude. I like elves and tieflings. Okay. Well, all of those except for well, the one Scott said is like normal, PHB basic, which Not there's normal. nothing wrong with the basic species or races. They're they're there for a reason. They started it off as like the main. The main ones. And, like, as you can see, most of them is elf, gnome, half orc, dwarf, uh, human, half elf, gnome. Oh, I already said that. What's that other one? Halfling. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then there's stuff like uh, Leonins. There's a hippo race. There's an owl race. There's a squirrel. There's a rat. There's a mouse. They got, a if cat. you can think about it, if you can think of it, they probably have it as a race, and if they don't, then you can just homebrew it. And homebrewing is just pretty much you make up stuff and you try to stick to the rules. Some homebrew stuff can be broken, so you got to be very, very careful with it, especially if you're a DM. But me, as a DM, I usually like to do homebrewed stuff because it just makes the game better because you can do anything you want. So, what, Tyler? You can't be laughing at me the whole time we're doing this. <laughs> I was just looking at you. You look right at me. But whenever you're you when you're picking your species or your race or whatever, you want to start thinking about what they're going to look like, and you kind of want to stick to a certain, like at least you can know your half elf. Like you can do a tiefling, and usually they're like which tiefling is like a demon race. They're like half demon, not necessarily bad, but they're usually like either they're just white colored or red and if you want to do a different color you have to talk to your dm make sure they want to do that because like i have a i have a green tiefling that i like to play a lot but that's not i guess canon yeah. would it be or whatever um that half orc has the face of a man but <laughs> an immaculate well, set of breasts <laughs> <laughs> it really does you see you can, your half orc can be ugly as shit, or it can be a beautiful half orc. I've seen some the pretty half orcs. Half elf looks like Bella from Twilight. A little bit, yeah. Why is the halfling so depressed? I don't know. It's just they just I just put and a and the dwarf. <laughs> they're so short. Yeah, they're so they're so small. But when you're doing this, think of what you want your character to look like and. They can look like anything. You can do. Any, you can make them look like you. You can make them look completely opposite of you. You can make them a different gender or your gender. It doesn't matter what you want to do. We should say some characters we've made. Or we yeah, can that's do how, that. yeah, we can. Well, I mean, we can do that now. Some of our characters that we've made. Tyler, you go for it now, bud. You just mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> um... <laughs> We did a D and D campaign one time about uh, Disney princesses, and I was Mulan, but I was the uh, the fat dude when he has makeup on his face. <laughs> That's what my Mulan looked like. You mean the woman that has makeup on her <laughs> yeah, face? Yeah, it's Is a that woman. A woman? Yeah. That's a woman. <laughs> I thought it was the the matchmaker. It might have yeah. been the woman with the. With the yeah, when she yeah, yeah, rubs yeah, her yeah, face, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I I'm, I did that. Um, we did a Harry Potter campaign, and I imagine he kind of looked like me, but he was from Kentucky, and he was so an alcoholic. Just Tyler, but Kentucky and alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, going to Hogwarts. So, any of the cat named dog. So, my some of my characters is I played a. A green tiefling artificer, 
He's like super smart, but he was like Jack, but he wasn't strong at all. It was all show muscles. <laughs> and he was a lot, like a lot of my characters are just me, maybe like accentuated in certain parts, like how I am. But mainly they're all just me, just different versions of me. They're the multiverse of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do whenever <laughs> I make a character. Because I had that, and then I had another, I had a shadow shadow sorcerer, and he was a half elf, and he was pretty similar to me. And he's pretty pretty sad like me too. Oh my god! <laughs> he has your multiple personality shining. <laughs> yeah, pretty like, much. Okay. But he's like there. He was probably him, and Remain was a tiefling, and then Locke was a shadow sorcerer. And he was those are two were my favorite to play because I I've put so much into them and so much thought into how they would be and stuff and what they would go through and all the things I went through with them. I mean, I love those characters, and I I hope they never die. <laughs> If your character dies, they die for real. You can never bring them back. Dead. Unless they get bring, brought back by the other characters. But there's permadeath. Remember that. <laughs> no cheating, neither. Dead bug. Like, I brought Dumbledore in one time, and he ran away. So I said, because I didn't yeah. want him to die. Yeah, he dipped. <laughs> Just totally <laughs> left the battle. <laughs> any, you got any characters, Scott? I can think of one. Which one are you thinking of? Oh, you know which one I'm thinking of. Doopy do. Doopy do. <laughs> yeah, he's probably one of my favorite characters. Old Doopy. Do it. <laughs> do the voice. Do the roar. <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> Let's get stage fright now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nothing, everything's on me. I'm Doopy. Doopy do. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much Dobby's. Cousin? He's Dumbledookie's yeah. half elf. Uh, I mean, house elf. He's not Dumbledookie's house elf. He is. Though. He's a free elf. All right. Don't listen to this man. And not D and D elf. Harry Potter elf. Yeah. 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 He's always asking for money though. Yeah. That's because look, y'all are and very gross. Y'all know how he gets his money. <laughs> yeah. So he collects. Shit. Okay. It <laughs> sounds you probably should have told him that. No, listen. It's not, not as not... nasty as you think. All right. Yeah, like actual poop. Not yeah. <laughs> like he collects things. He yeah. Collects well, that is kind of nasty. But and he s- makes molds out of them and sells them back to folks. <laughs> it's a great business proposition. Look, I promise you, he's rolling in the dough. I've only really played twice. I can't remember what I made when he did Doopy. I don't really care about my one shot characters. That's horrible, probably. But I mean, a lot of people don't care about. Which, if y'all don't know, a one shot like usually when you play a campaign or play a D and D session, it's like a campaign, and it's like where it's a continuous story. Like y'all play, go about your lives, and you come back and play, and you're in the same like you're playing with the same characters. You're going through a story. It's like episodes. A one shot is like it's a one time one go, and done, baby. yeah, and it's like pretty much somebody wants to try something out, or they just have a little story or a little get together you want to have with friends. You can do like a little one shot. That's what that is. Just FYI. Yeah, um, my favorite character is Mirth, just because that's who I've actually played. I had the first campaign we did was Seely, but I don't even really remember. Yeah, I've, uh, about her. My very first character was In, and he was a ranger. And, I mean, he was pretty much just me. I just made him me. My very first character was a uh, Yezer Longbottom. <laughs> Yezer. Yezer. And, uh, I think my first character was a Goliath of some kind. It was, I think. Yeah. Good. I named Mirth after Harry Potter because uh, J.K. Rowling likes to use that word a lot because it means joy. So she'll say that a character laughed with Mirth. But then when she talks about Voldemort, she'll say that he laughs mirthlessly like... Without, there, there is joy. no like joy. it's an evil. <laughs> 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 but uh, that was when I was listening to those audiobooks on repeat, and that word just like for some stuck reason. I mean, it's a good head. name. Yeah, the name. I don't. I'm bad at coming up with names, but I really like my names. Like a tiefling, you'll you'll learn this. Like each race, they have like little quirks and stuff like that. And like the tieflings sometimes name themselves after a vir- virtue. I think mm-hmm. like. There was one of my friends had like freedom, and then there's, I had remain, and then it's like little things that kind of mean something to them. So I had remain as my tiefling, and then Locker near Grayshade just sounded dope, and I was like, that sounds noble as <laughs> yeah. shit. That's why, because I had a noble, but 
And his, he usually I have like this name, and then they'll have like a nickname. I don't. Know, that's just something I always done. But. That's all I try and think of is like epic names for some of them, other than like Kavar. It's just Kavar. There's nothing else to Kavar. it. Kavar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I usually go for kind of like cool, but I mean, I try to make it inside. Some people like doing funny names, which is fine, but I usually try to do. What was just, my last fun? My last name. Sometimes hey, some people Martin. don't have last names. No, no. <laughs> it's Martin. Not, not last name. Doxum. <laughs> oh, I had Wilhelm and McCoy. They were trash. And they didn't have last names. <laughs> no, they didn't. Um, my biggest thing with my characters is that I don't even care. About the name. I just like doing voices. Y- me too. That's uh, how I start <laughs> off. I don't even think about the character. I think about the voice yes. first, Some and people, then I like, mash it in. A lot of people do that, and it's it's smart to do it like that. I'm okay. I like doing voices. I just can't keep it consistent. Maintain it. Yeah. 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 Unless uh, it's super silly. Well, I'll like, I'll start a voice and it'll go from <laughs> it'll go from like British Australian. Australian country and then just just straight Irish. <laughs> Irish then then you go down to the bayou and <laughs> it's just Tyler will switch voices in different sessions. Like yeah. he'll be like, Did he have that voice last session? It's like I don't know, like let's roll with it. Yeah. He'll talk really quietly. And he just kind of talks like this. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Let him talk yeah. like this. He's uh, very anti-social. I like Hunkley's voices. I forgot uh, about Hunkley's. Hunkley's. <laughs> <laughs> that was also in the Disney D and D one shot we did. My first character talked like Miranda sings, and you don't like these. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I talk the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy it very much. <laughs> and I've talked to Tyler. I already have a voice ready for our next D&D campaign. <laughs> and it's like these. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have to talk a very high <laughs> pitch. You know who you sound like? You sound like um, Critical Mort. Role. Um, <laughs> Sounds like Laura Bailey's tiefling. God, what was her name? I forgot her name. But you sound like Laura Bailey's tiefling. That's how she talked. <laughs> That's how she she talked talk like this. <laughs> You have to do very high, b- <laughs> King Julian. <laughs> Good God, what? <Bort>. King Julian. <laughs> okay, so I'm well, very excited. Y'all been looking at these racial traits for a minute, so I'll, I'll go over them real quick. But whenever you your race determines these things, whenever you make or choose one, ability score increase. I'll get into that. Your ability scores. Um, that'll be later on a little bit. But that's like your strength, dex, constitution. Charisma, intelligence, and wisdom. Um, but then it's your age. Now, the ages work different for races or species. Humans are like, it determines when they mature and then when they're going to die, pretty much grow, grow old. Humans are like normal. Late teens, early 20s is when they mature. And then around like 80 is when you die. Things can switch and happen where that doesn't happen in like a campaign, but that's like, that's the baseline. Like, elves, they live until they're 700. <clears throat> but, like, the age also plays, like, it can play, if you're a DM, it can also play in, or in a character, it plays into how you play them. Because, like, an elf, if you live for 700 years, you're not trying to get stuff done all that quick. you got 700 years to get it done. So you might take 100 years to learn basket weaving. They might take another 100 years to do this where as humans they don't have 100 years to do something so you got a couple of weeks yeah they got a couple of weeks to do some basket weaving but that's kind of it plays into how you play your character because you're human if you're playing a human you might want to get the stuff done faster or if you're playing an elf you're like eh, we'll get to it i mean you got a 700 years that's how you that's kind of how you can play it other races like doors live to like 300 and stuff but it's like when they mature and then when they when they're gonna die. Next is alignment. I don't really go off of this when I DM or play, and most of us don't. But it helps when you're all this helps in creating a character that you can play, and you want to stay in character as you're going. So like alignment is there's neutral and chaotic and good and evil, and like is you can be like neutral evil, chaotic evil, all that stuff. And if you kind of put yourself in that category you 
whenever you're making choices for your character, if you don't know what to do, you could use that to make a choice for your character. Which that helps, like, you stay away from your personal feelings yeah. about the game. It helps you get into the character. Yeah, because a lot of the time when you're playing, you want to you wanna do what your character would do and not necessarily what you would do in that situation. And Good. that's not always the same. Well, and like, that kind of goes back to some of the stuff we've done in our campaigns. Like... Kavar is a character that I have, and his alignment is lawful good. And so, what, there was something about saving people yeah. in one of our campaigns? and like It's like, no matter what, you have yes, to save them. My character, no matter how anybody in the party felt, had to go save these folks, even if it's the most annoying thing possible. Well, he clashed with the my big thing, right. yeah, The big thing with that is a lot of people play more of the chaotic side, because like a chaotic good is almost like a... Almost like an anti-hero, maybe not as much. They're more like a neutral, chaotic neutral, which neutral is just like in the middle of all those. But um, like a lawful good character, and you got like a lawful good paladin, and this is like a classic example, and a lawful, and you got a chaotic good thief. Well, let's say the thief steals some bread to feed the poor because they're Robin chaotic. Hood. Yeah, they're Robin Hood or whatever. That lawful good will still say you can't do that because you're stealing. Right. So they're kind of a fucking narc. Yeah. You don't have to play like that, but a lot of times Twirl. it can cause like in in the group of real life people, it can cause like turmoil. Yeah, like it's not that fun because this paladin is like everything you do, he's like, You can't do that. Golly. <laughs> man, you get off this man. <laughs> Neanderthal? Yeah. No, no, you can no. do that. No, no do. do that. <laughs> no. No. no, no, do, no, do, do, do good, <laughs> do good, no, do, do. <laughs> you no say do that do. you don't really go off of it, and I, I don't really either at this point. But I, f- I feel like beginners making characters, they fill in all the slots and yeah. then build their character around what they wrote. So it is helpful to have, yeah. even if you don't end up using it. And even first. if, like, even I'll have like a loose, like I'll say my character is neutral good. And I'll try to stick to that, but it can switch as you go on. You don't know what happens in the right. campaign character or development. something. I yeah. always end up creating my character like ten yeah, like, minutes before the session starts. That makes sense. So that's why yeah, all my know. characters are trash. <laughs> They're all just buttholes. I'm terrible about like even in video games and things. Like if I'm gonna choose something, I'm gonna choose how I feel, and I'm never going to veer off of that. Like I have to that's follow the I rules. Am. That's how I kind of how I am. And that's, so. I mean, that's scary. Maybe one day I'll join a cult because I do that. But, you know, like, I'm always, I've got to follow the rules. But when you do that in D&D, I can be like, okay, I've got to break my inner yeah. conscience yeah. and just be like, do do whatever, you know. That's It's like me with Hogwarts Legacy. Because you keep, so I think as you said it, like, the more if you get the... Um, I don't know this for sure. I know what he's about to say. Yeah, if you get the... Uh, Curses. Unforgivable curses, is that what they're called, Katie? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you use them, and the more you use them, like, you are you kind of become, like, a, a bad person in the game. And I keep telling myself, I'm like, I don't want to become a bad person. But it's like, I really want to use those spells. And I'm like, <laughs> I can just do it. I can just be a bad person. I can just be the Hufflepuff that ruins Hufflepuff's name. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's going to happen in the game. I was going to bring that up, too, because I'm not going to use the curses because I don't know what it's going to do. I am, but that's because oh, that's how I'm playing it. How I would play it first, and that's how I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't use them unless I'm gonna like, I absolutely had to. I'm gonna Avada Kedavra the hell out of that headmaster. He's a butthole. <laughs> I don't think you can do that. But take it away, Quidditch. Um, yeah, for a whole year. <laughs> the next is size, and each rates whatever you. A gnome is very small. A halfling is small. They're like half a human. They're like three foot tall four foot tall on the other hand a goliath is like six foot seven foot eight, eight foot, foot bunch <laughs> <laughs> so and bun, bun, bun. <clears throat> most characters are medium but sometimes some stuff considers large they go by like small medium large huge gargantuan and it goes on from there but and damn Sorry. <laughs> that it your race does play in your, that's a huge your, bitch <laughs> plays into how big your character is and then it also plays into your speed which is like pretty much how fast you move in combat and stuff some I get mean, lower some are higher are going to be yeah. you know the halfling steps you're going to take a lot longer to get <laughs> from one place to yeah. the other look like mr krabs walking 
and then that also you have like a base language that everybody knows common and that's common is just what you speak like in real life whatever you all speak in real life that's common but english spanish each race has their own language and your character will understand that and can communicate with other characters in that language and then some races um some some races have like elves they have like dark elves they have high elves they have well, lunar elves i don't know they got all types of elves like there's sub races elves. yeah there's gnomes have like rock gnomes and it's all where they come from and they have different features that go with each one of them and stuff like that so that's all that when you're choosing your species or race you can take into account and this all the stuff that will affect it when you do it Next slide. Now we're going to choose our classes. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> yeah, they're little dice. They're so sweet. The little warlock. Look at the druid. He's got a little dice. I didn't even feet. notice they were dice. Yeah, I thought they were rocks at first. Yeah. Oh, look at all the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I like the look barbarian. Look at all those yeah. chickens. Yeah, but these are some of the classes. And again, this is PHB classes. Um, I, I mean, I guess y'all could read it. I could go through them. Or I could say what I've played. I've played Sorcerer. I've played a ranger. I mean, I've played like all of them, but mainly, mainly I like rangers, sorcerers. That's pretty much it. That's Tyler, I usually yeah. gravitate Who towards do you the like rogues. To play the most? Um, you've been a bard the most. It's been I a suck monk. at being a bard. <laughs> Tyler tries yeah. every every time to try to play a bard, and the man just can't get it down. Yeah, I'm not a support. <laughs> you character. played a monk that one time. That um, cool. I think my favorite that I played that's not up there is the uh, Blood Hunter. Blood Hunter. That's what it is. There's also Bro, classes. That's a rough class outside of yeah. PHP. Marking people and like blood coming out of their orifices. Well, you, it's like you have to damage yourself a lot to unlock more stuff to do. But yeah, but you just if you just do like me and just bump your constitution up by like twenty points, you, you ain't got to worry about health. Everybody's like, I got 36 HP, and I'm over here like, <laughs> which 74. Honestly, I could, level one. I could probably do whole episodes over each class, so I might leave that for that. I mean, I'll go over some of them a little bit, so you'll know what's going on. But um, if y'all like this D&D content, then I'll definitely go over it. But when you do choose your class, remember, it is not your profession. It's a way of life. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. 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 And all I mean by this is like, it says it in the PHB, but it's like, this is not what you do for a job. It's it's what your character is. It's what they kind of go by. It's their life experiences and stuff that makes them have these classes. So it also kind of determines how you play your character. Like a fighter is not going to make the same choices as a wizard. Fighter is like, they believe they're like, you know, a, they might be a knight or like a foot soldier in the militia. So they're going to be more, they're going to go into battle and they're going to be like front line. Whereas a wizard, you might think, well, I need to stay back and like control certain situations and make certain decisions and like that stuff like that. Do you think that different classes already kind of have like a, not really a set alignment, but more of them are like sometimes yeah. determined to be certain things? Because like, a paladin, for example, would probably be more of, and maybe not lawful, but a good character versus an evil character, wouldn't well, you think? Well, it just depends. Not necessarily, because you can be a paladin of evil gods. Oh, I guess you're right. And, like, it all the, it's all how you want to play. If you do want to play the good paladin, you can. I mean, it's, it's a little cliche, but there's a reason it's like that, because it's fun to play like that. Yeah. But there's also, it's also fun to play a bad paladin. You, you, you follow a bad god. Like, a paladin is it's a class that you get your power from a god or deities. And so you kind of go based on, you're like a priest with a sword pretty much. You're like a Templar or something like that. So you're going to make decisions based on how your god's beliefs are and everything and how your followers are and everything. So that's one of the things like that whenever you make a class and you pick a class, you're going to make certain decisions. Like with a cleric or paladin, you're going to make more of a decision on what your god and what's going on with them instead of what you personally believe the whole time. I gotcha. When with your class comes class features. And each of these classes, they, they, um, <clears throat> there's stuff that sets you apart from others. And 
that's like spell casting. So your wizards, sorcerers, clerics, druids, they're all spell casting, whereas fighters and like barbarians and all that, which they can have magic, all can have magic and do different stuff, but they have more proficiencies, which proficiency, all that is, is like you're good with this certain thing. So you're good with a short sword or a martial weapon. That means that you do better with that than like a wizard who doesn't have a proficiency because they've never trained in it. Tyler too did. <laughs> He's a child. He's a child. He had Mexican at three o'clock today. <laughs> I tried to hold it in. And we'll the go. Laugh, not the fart. We can go all in proficiencies and armors and skills and stuff because each class has their own thing. And this is all stuff you can think about when you're creating your character. So, like, I have a fighter. He has. He's proficient with a bow and his armor is like medium armor. So I'd wear all that. If that's the kind of character I want to play. Then that's what I'm going to use. Yeah. Like I like more of a physical character, like who's going to have to like beat them up or like, you know, use a sword. Whereas I think Katie's more of like a spellcaster character. Like she likes to think about like, kind of think ahead, like not just go into it and fight. She wants to like think about what spell she's going to use next. Yeah. I like the, the way you can flare spells Yeah, and fun. it, it, not always the case, but it uh, it does seem like the spells do more damage than weapons do half the time. So That's true. Yeah, sometimes weapons are more consistent where spells can do, like, massive damage. Sometimes. Yeah. And all this, which, I mean, honestly, we can do episodes over breakdowns of different stuff, but I'm just kind of, like, surface level skills and saving throws and all that we'll get into, but... Your class determines how good you are with these different things. And, like, a fighter can't cast spells, but a wizard can. And then there's half casters, which is a mix between fighting with weapons and then casting spells. They just can't do as much with spells as a full spell caster can do. So now we're going to get into your... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ability scores. You just cough like a child. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. I'm going to jump to this thing right here. Y'all can ignore this stuff to the right. All right, your ability scores. I wish I had a fucking laser pointer or something. Oh, I but this stuff out. all the way to the left. The strength, dex, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Um, They all determine. It's kind of self-explanatory, but not really. Like, strength is how strong you are. So it's how hard you can hit something with a stick and how how good you can pick up things. What's your batting average? Yeah, what's your... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might be more dex, but... Oh, probably right. Dex is more like agile stuff, like dodging and jumping and being what? more like acrobatic and stuff like that. Like um, your batting average? <laughs> your I, batting was really average. Thinking, I was thinking about like home run hits, you know? But well, that yeah, that would be more knocking it out of the how park. far you can hit the ball. Right. That would be strength. Maybe, right. yeah. And then strength dex is how probably... how many tackles you got. Dex is probably how many times Whole you can sport. hit the ball. That would probably be uh, flagrant foul. <laughs> It'd probably be dexterity too, though. And then constitution yeah. is like that. That determines your health or your hit points in this. I mean, that's literally how many times you can get hit. But constitution is like how well you could also take blows too. Like not necessarily like hits, but. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's intelligence and wisdom, which people might be like, ain't that the same thing? That's like your playmaking ability. Like, which one? Wisdom is different than intelligence. Intelligence. Yeah, intelligence, I would say, is like your book smart. Yeah. Like how well you can, like you studied history and how well you can remember it. Read your plays. You read all your books and stuff like that. And wisdom is more like street smarts, like your perception. And the example that I've seen that's helped me the most is like, You've got a wall, and a character high in wisdom might see that the dust is, like, is being un- unsettled under the door, like disturbed. right below, yeah, disturbed below the door. So there's so like, wind. Yeah, so they're like, that, that. that's weird. I see that, and they might tell the intelligence character, like, hey, the winds, do you see that? And then he's like, oh, I didn't see that. That means that's probably a fake door. So they, like, intelligence is like, Oh, this is what this is. is. And Winston's like, oh, I, I noticed this. The wind's coming through there. That's where we exit. One's like noticing the details. The other one is actually solving the, yeah, like, the what problem. it is. Knowing yeah. what it is. Kind of. That's <clears throat> And it probably goes a lot you more in depth than that. You can be wise but, and not intelligent. Yeah. Like, 
you, you like can have lived a long life and know the answers to life, but that doesn't mean... Been through experiences and yeah. stuff you can like that. build a rocket and go to Mars. The, the school student that has no experience that's been in school the whole time studying books compared to the person who's been out out in the real world doing the real man's Roaming work. Roaming the streets. It's like, <laughs> it's like common sense smart and then book smart. Yeah, like I said. Yeah, yes. About five you minutes just ago. repeated <laughs> what Trevor said. Yeah. One's book smart, one's common sense. For example, <laughs> Tyler has no intelligence. <laughs> Charisma is like is how well you can talk, how groovy you are. What's up, baby? How you how much you mojo, can persuade baby. old silver tongue devil? Mm-hmm. I gotta get, make sure my bits and pieces are still working. <laughs> All right, Austin Powers. <laughs> This coffee tastes like it. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to determine these things, and I'm going to, this bottom, it can get kind of confusing. Yes. I don't know if I'm going to explain this good enough, and I'm so sorry. I'm so there's glad there's a thing called D&D Beyond where I can just point by yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I graduated high school somehow. <laughs> I don't go, I don't do math. Math. That's not math. Hard. It points it out here, right here. So <laughs> your scores. English either. Which I'm going to be jumping between these two slides. I should have put them next to each other. But <clears throat> your ability score modifiers. So a baseline is 10. Like you've got 10 intelligence, 10 strength, 10 dexterity. That's like average. And the modifier is what this is that plus zero, plus one, plus two. And if you're listening, I'm sorry. I don't know how to explain this. But <laughs> it, this just made it click because I always do the point by and this just made it click yeah. for me. Yeah. Because it does the same thing when you scroll down. One yeah. click. <laughs> well, like you said, I'm ten lost. is the base. It's yeah, everything so, zeroed out at ten. Like let's say your swing, your guy's strength, and you have a sword, and you have a ten strength. So that means you're not gonna you're gonna have average strength behind it. So there's not gonna be any improvement of how hard you swing that sword. Now let's say you move up to a twelve strength, then you're gonna get a plus one. So you're gonna do that much harder of a swing a plus one and it pretty much it, as it increases by two you get a plus one to your modifier so <clears throat> highest that most players are is 20 so that's like a plus five so you can swing that sword a lot harder than you can swing than a person with a 10 strength can have how do you get to a 30 um that's i don't think a player character can ever unless it's homebrewed the when you get past 20 it's more of like when you face the gods and the dragons and the big bads of the world. That's who has those enemies do, pretty much. And this is where you're going to determine what your character has. And what class you're playing is where you want to put the most points in. So, like, a barbarian, who's mainly strength, is going to want to have a high strength compared to a high intelligence. Because they're not going to use intelligence. Strength, the st- dexterity, they, constitution. Big stick, boom. Yeah. That's what they think. <laughs> that's not every barbarian. There, You can make a smart barbarian. You can do whatever you want. But there's a thing called min max. And that's a lot of people do it. I do it. I have a bad habit of doing it. And that's when you make your stats like whatever your character is not going to use, you make it as low as possible. And whatever your character is going to use, you make it as high as possible. There's three different ways that the book gives you to make your character and put your points into where you want to put them in your strength decks and all that standard array is you take these you take 15 14 13 12 10 and 8 and you just plug them into where you want them so like that barbarian would want to put the 15 in strength probably like the 14 in constitution and then maybe the 13 in decks and then so on from there maybe the 8 could go into intelligence or charisma and then the 10 and 12 you plug in to whatever you want to wisdom or What's the other one? Am I missing one? Did you say charisma? Wisdom, whatever. All those. Uh, yeah. You're teaching me right now. I had no <laughs> idea. Honestly, I yeah. never understood this. Yeah. We've I'm been playing so this lost. long and y'all, y'all I never knew do how to the do point this. Buy. Again, we, yeah. I mean, we the never point do paper character sheets, so I've never really needed to know. The point yeah. buy is my favorite system. Oh, yeah. And this system, all it is, is um, it's actually a little bit more confusing on paper, but you have 27 points that you can use. So if you put, if you want to put an eight, somewhere or a 10 then you're going to subtract two points away from that 27 and then if you put 15 into like your strength you're going to subtract nine from that 27 so pretty much you want to use all your all those 27 points and that's kind of like the max you can get and that's the point by which 
on a computer and stuff, it's a lot easier because you can just like move stuff up with a plus, and like you can move your strength up to I wanted a fourteen, and it'll do all the subtraction and stuff for you. The other thing you can do, which I've never done, and now that I see this is how it actually is, because I thought it was way different, is you can roll your numbers. And you take 46, and all 46s, you take four D6s, which is a six-sided die, and you roll them. And then you take the lowest number out, and you add the three highest, you add the higher numbers. You pretty much add the three highest numbers. And then you get that for six. You do that six times, and you plug those numbers into your what, strength and stuff. What if you roll a Yahtzee? Then you're probably going to have a really good one, depending on what you roll. I mean, it doesn't really <laughs> matter. But I rolled all that ones. This is way more <laughs> random, and it can also this can also determine how your character acts. Like, let's say you just roll shit, and you got you got three on all of them or whatever, then your character is going to be real crappy. So you got to play your character real crappy. Or if you have to put, thing. if you have to dump the lowest score into your intelligence, then you're probably going to be playing a character that has low intelligence. So you got to play them kind of dumb, which doesn't mean you don't, you can't speak, <laughs> right? But that's where most people go to. Like, well, if you can't figure out what kind of character stick. you want to make, yeah, you can just roll help. for it and there's your... There's your character. Instead of starting with a voice like me and Scott yeah. did. My next character is going to be Barbarian from the movie Barbarian. All these, <laughs> all those <laughs> modifiers, which you can see right there to the left. You see that they got a sh- 10 strength, which is a zero modifier. 15 dexterity was a plus two. Uh, 14 is plus two. 16 is plus three, whatever. You see that up there. That determines... All those skills you have to the right of those abilities right there. And the skills are everything from acrobatics to survival to stealth. And each one of the categories or each one of the abilities affects what that's going to do, each one of your skills. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's important to specify that these numbers get added to your dice rolls. Yes, that's. (laughs) it's like, um, let's say I make a stealth check. That means I'm just being sneaky. I'm sneaking around somebody. My stealth is a plus two, so I'm going to roll a d20 dice. That's a 20-sided die. I'm going ro- to roll it and then add plus two to whatever number I get. So I get a 12, I got a 14. So the DM determines, like, all right, you successfully sneak past this goblin or no, the goblin noticed you, depending on how good the goblin can perceive stuff. Like maybe your character, um, they were in the military and they maybe were like a scout or something in the military. So they were they were able to learn how to perceive stuff a lot better, which is your, um, I was about to say precipitation. That's <laughs> where your how rain well comes rain? <laughs> Perception. That means your perception is, you're pretty proficient in seeing what's going on and seeing what you, details and stuff. So you have, you're proficient in that. Which you get a proficiency bonus. I feel like this is where it's going to get a little muddy. Hmm. You get a proficiency bonus. <laughs> it's been and that muddy. goes with your level. <laughs> I've been lost. So, so when you're this. proficient, you would add your modif- modifier and your perci- perci- precipitation. Precipitation <laughs> bonus. <laughs> proficiency. <laughs> which one are you trying to say? <laughs> proficiency. Sorry. I, I was trying to make a joke and now I made it worse. Your proficiency and your modifier, your ability score modifier to whatever you're rolling. So instead of, let's say if I was proficient in stealth, then I would be a plus four instead of just a plus two because I'm good at stealth. I was I learned as a young orphan to sneak around and steal bread, and that's how I got good at stealthing around. You were an orphan? Yeah. <laughs> so look, hold on. All right, I had a question. Because you're talking about stuff that you're proficient in. So on this screen, let's use religion as an example. It's a plus five already. Yeah. So, would you add, since it's intelligence, would you add the plus three to that as well? Or is that not how that works? No, it's plus five because it's the three for intelligence plus the two plus proficient. The two proficient. It's, it's already added. Yeah, it's already, already added. added, added yeah, they, the they added it to this. Okay. Which, that's what you would want to do. You so, you can just look at it. Out. So, when you roll a d20. Oh, religion plus five. Yeah. You roll your d20, your 20-sided die, you roll it, and you got what you needed to. Okay. You add it, and then that's what you're role would be is proficiency always going to be plus two or is that like no it moves up as you level as up. you level up okay. yeah so at certain levels it's D D level go one through 20 i don't know ex- exactly when the proficiencies move up but it starts at like zero proficient and then you get like a plus one 
eventually, and then you get plus two, and I think it goes to like plus five. So it's like you get better and better at the skills as you go on. It makes sense. Like your character grows, they're growing, they're doing all this stuff, they're getting better as they go. Just by life itself, killing stuff. So this is the fun. This is the fun part. Which these slides aren't all that great, so you don't have to look at them. But and now you want to describe your character. This is literally whatever you want your character to look like. You take your class, you take your... <laughs> this stuff. <coughs> yeah, this stuff. You take your class, you take what race you are, and you you plan out what your character is going to look like. Some people already have this in mind before they even... They know what their character is going to look like, and then they do what like what their class and stuff is going to be. But if you haven't got there yet, then you've got... All this stuff that you've picked to help you make your class and make your person how you want to look. You can like li- you can do almost anything as long as you stick to this like the loose rules and you stick to what your DM wants. I mean, you can't make a tiefling with wings and be like, I can just fly. That's like that's probably a no go. There's some races that fly, but from my experiences, races that fly kind of suck. Because flying adds a whole new thing where the DM has to deal with it. And you have to <laughs> snipe another sky all the time. So it's really just a nuisance to the DM, not yeah. the character itself. When you envision your character in your head, that's how they look. And that's how you describe them. And I, I just threw this up here because that's just something you fill out on your your player sheet at the top. And that's all the stuff pretty much what makes your character and describing them and stuff. Next is the fun part. <laughs> we get to choose our equipment. <laughs> Like I said before, your characters have proficiencies, like your fighters are proficient in certain weapons, which fighters are proficient in all weapons. So whenever you're picking your equipment, there's a certain list that you have as starting equipment for each character. And so like a a fighter can pick a martial weapon, which a martial weapon is like every weapon pretty much. And that's everything like a from sword. Yes. Like a long sword a to block. To a Glock, <laughs> to a hammer, That's a, a lightsaber, weapon. to a long bow, short bow, crossbows, all all, all the, the things, bows. all the bows. I bow, U bow, we bow, one we bow. bow. First grade, SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> and the player's handbook gives you, like your class, gives you certain things that you can look at and like what you can pick. And so it'll be like your gold and how much you get, like explorer kits and dungeoneer kits and stuff like that. Um, Which, like, some of that, like, when you come up with the backstory and you're like, oh, I was rich and I yeah. have, like, you, you know, then you would have a lot of gold starting yeah. out. And your backstory, which is a big part, that's a big part in describing your characters. What pretty much what happened in their life up until they got to the point where you're playing the campaign. So. That's where you can get real creative. Like if you're an orphan, you don't have any money. Yeah, that's that's kind of a cliche thing to go to is the orphan because it's like the easiest. You got the sad orphan story. Oh, uh-uh. I grew up on the streets. I Make just your character had a bowl of slosh every day, and I learned to kill people. <laughs> Make your character a trust fund baby, <laughs> so your money just keeps coming. That's actually good. Out. Yeah, <laughs> play a noble. Those are pretty fun. I've, I've played a noble, and it's fun to be like, oh, your society. Yeah. But be stingy with I'm your money. Rich. Yeah. Be stingy with it. Only buy stuff you need. Don't buy stuff for the group. Yeah. And like the party fund. Yeah. yeah. And then that, like that's every character Tyler's <laughs> right. <play. laughs> Each class gets sometimes they'll get like special things like a uh, I think this one to the right is like um they seem like I think it's either a cleric or a paladin but they get like a holy symbol and the holy symbol is what their god symbol is and what they use to cast their spells where as a wizard would have their little wizard book and they would have their component pouch the things they need to cast spells Keep a fighter would have none of that and he would have a sword a knife maybe something to make a fire with a pack i don't know what else it's about the same matchbook but you, yeah. you already got a matchbook uh yeah. Going back to wizards in the Harry Potter campaign, Keith had a plunger as his wizard, or as as his wizard, <laughs> as his wand, cast it straight he, out of that plunger. That's what we call homebrew. Which Katie did make a whole homebrew campaign in the Harry Potter universe is pretty is dope, really more cool. than I would do. Better than any campaign ever made. It was based off of Cursed Child, so it wasn't really my story, but 
I mean, but I still, had to homebrew like all the spells and yeah. the items and that's stuff. That's a lot. Like when the DM homebrews a whole fucking world, then you better appreciate them. Yeah. They got to do oh, a lot. Yeah. I made the the houses feats that and it gave them extra stuff. Yeah, it was see, like cool. that. That was dope. Yeah, which feats is another thing we can get. Then into. we we go to them. on D and D Beyond and go to a different campaign. And Heavy soul. We make a character and then you're picking your spells and you're like, oh my god, they added Lumos to. <laughs> It's so a day in day. It's a day in day. I can make it a lot in here. <laughs> he just, Katie's like, no, that's that's it's, it's a Harry Potter. I'm like, still, I'm using it. Homebrew. You gonna use it? I'm gonna use it. I bought a cadaver, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's we never use that's a level ten hands. spell. Did you put that in there? It was in there, but nobody like tried to learn it or anything. Should it was I, there as an option. I didn't really it know. W- it's not like. It wasn't like OP where it's like a one shot death. It was there was like levels to it. If you want help making your character so you can get like a better view of call your true. character in your head, don't call me because <laughs> I know that. Way. His number is. Uh, it's not a sponsor. <laughs> It'd be dope if it will one day. But Hero Forge, <laughs> you can use them. They have a crap ton of things you can you can design your little minis that you can use in your campaign you can or have whatever. Them riding on stuff too, like. Hero Forge is cool too because not only can you like buy your mini and have it shipped to you, but you can just make your character and download the file if you have your own yeah. 3D printer. You have to pay for the file, which we've I've yeah, done. Yeah, but we've done. Not expensive. And then even if you don't and you just want somebody like this is what my character looks like, you can throw it up there and they add to where you can put lights in it and you can do you can put them in scenes and stuff. It's a it's a very good, useful, helpful tool with making a character because they have pretty much all the. You can make it look like anything you want to, especially when it pertains to D&D and stuff. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. Yet. Yet. <laughs> I hope you will one day. <laughs> one day. We all want minis of ourselves. We'll take them and we'll sit them in front of them. Look at that. Oh, every kid had take this. Back. And <laughs> <laughs> take it back. Port. Take it back to middle school. Their power port. All right. We're in... <sighs> okay. <laughs> Spells gets a little intense. All right. So if you picked a class, if you don't go through and explain every single one of these, I'm gonna be pissed. No, he's not. <laughs> I'm not. I just pu- pulled this list up. This is, I think, this is like a druid spell list. But if you have a spellcaster, speak with dead as your. Did I say vicious monkey character? Vicious mockery. Oh. <laughs> you just conjure <laughs> a vicious. Monkey. I'll let. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that. Hold up, hold up. Where's it at? From Friends, Marcel. Oh, Marcel. That's all I pictured is Ross and Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> he could speak with animals too. Dang, there's a, actually a a class that you can s- change one letter in a spell, and it will change the spell, and you can use it like that. If it was close enough, you could probably <laughs> change vicious mockery to vicious monkey and have and oh my like God. <laughs> and have a vicious monkey come. <laughs> Attack Tyler, people. The second That'd level. be so dumb. Tyler's going to use that magic mouth. Ugh. <laughs> um, the second <laughs> the second level spells, number 22, the zone of truth. That seems like something my second grade teacher had in the corner of her room. I mean, it, now you're in the zone of truth. You're the, not going to lie to me now. One of the characters on the Adventure Zone Still uses lied. that, like, in the first campaign they did, they use it all the time. It's actually a pretty cool spell. Yeah, it makes them tell the, the truth. truth. It makes yeah. people tell the truth. You can't lie when you're in it. Oh, try me. I mean, you could try, but you're probably not going to succeed on the saving throw. <laughs> um, so spells, if you have the character that can do spells, spells range from 1 through 9. That's their levels. With cantrips. Cantrips are spells that can be cast without using a spell slot. Each level gets a certain number of spell slots that you can use. And that means you, you got three level 1 spell slots. That means you can cast a level 1 spell three times. And you get more spell slots as you level up, so you can't be like a level one character with a level with a nine level spell slot. That's like when you get to level. I'm thinking, I think it's eighteen or nineteen. Then you'll get a ninth level spell slot, and you only get one of those. And you this can, limits how many times you can cast the spell. You can get your spell slots back with a long rest, but can yeah. you get them back with a short rest? Um, only warlocks. Oh, okay. And maybe maybe there's like a subclass that can. I didn't even get into that. Surface level. There's well, a surface lot. level people. There's a there's a lot to it, and there we might do some more, maybe a part two to get more in depth about certain stuff like 
I could do a whole episode over classes and their different things and all that. So we'll get into that at another time of day. Um, TBD. But T- wizards B-D. like that, T-B-B. they can they have certain amount of titty beef. <laughs> Hardy beef. Do we remember the titty kitty? <laughs> we homebrewed a a little cat creature. It was a felis was the uh, species, and uh, we named it. Cooter. We named it Cooter after Tyler's cat Cooter. <laughs> And uh, Haley's character toted it around in her titties the whole time. Yeah. That was a squirrel. No. Did you put him in your titties too? Yeah. <laughs> so she put everything. This is in all titties. you can do with your character. Remember that. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot you see, more. You, there's you, anything you can. It all imagine. comes back around to boobies at the end of the day. And like, <laughs> as you play, as you play, which I like the best. As and that's where my characters get better. Is as you play more with these characters, stuff happens that their character development and there's things that happen that it's like, Oh, well now this is what my character does. Like carry around a squirrel in her titties. <laughs> Didn't think my character was going to be like that, but it is. And it's hilarious and great. So that you can always remember like your, your characters, even though you make it at the beginning, they're always going to be growing and becoming better. At least that's what you want to happen. If that's not happening, then yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this this is his best with my dyslexia is so bad. First spell, first level, eighteen and nineteen. I thought it said sleep with animals. <laughs> bestiality is, so is not a spell. <laughs> yeah. D and D does not support bestiality. Nor do we. <laughs> no. Not at all. And each car- each class has their own way of how they handle spells. Wizards, you gotta you gotta book. That you use, and that's where you learn your spells. You write your spells down in there. So wizards can almost know like all the spells as long as they learn it. Oh, and I was an artificer, and when you do you, those spells, you like use whatever talent you have to make yeah. them happen. Yeah, there's that too. There's artificers, and then like paladins only get a certain number of spells, and they don't really learn them. It's just kind of like they, they come to them through their god or whatever, however you want to flavor it. Um, that's kind of how clerics are too. Warlocks get their spells through extra plane or he deities or whatever. Not really deities; they're just otherworldly things. <laughs> it's just spells. I don't know. There's uh, spells get so intense. I probably make a whole video on that too. The whole episode. <laughs> Trevor's gonna do a whole spinoff podcast, just D and D podcast. <laughs> She's gonna be him by him. himself. Yeah, looking at the camera intensely. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just gonna be monotone and be like. And today I'm not going to learn about spells. Like a college professor who hates cantrips. Are, but anyways. <laughs> but yeah, that's spe- that's spells. Um, I'm terrible about picking spells. Yeah, it's kind of a it's <laughs> tedious when you ever you have to pick spells, but you can also use that. Let's say your character was a farmer, a druid farmer. That's how they grew up. They were. On the farm, and they just learn how to do magic Protecting through the because, like a druid, I can go <laughs> like a druid. Their spell casting has to do with like nature, like they're a druid. They do stuff through nature and everything. So you could grow up on a farm, and let's say you Pull get up on a which farm. farm. Oh, farm. <laughs> they don't get magic missile, but I'm just going to use this. You somehow got magic missile. Your magic missiles instead of just being like a ball of energy that you shoot, it could be a chicken. You shoot a ball of energy chicken that flies at people and explodes. From the, from the you can flavor your spells about how your character it's a is made. Stock. Yeah, yeah. Like how you ever your character, a corn dog. you have them in your head. <laughs> make your spells that way. You can flavor your spells to make them more personalized to your character, more personalized to you. You're a baker. You, can think of that. you use icing. Yeah, you use icing, uh, icing Haley knife instead of ice knife. <laughs> you did that with uh. Yeah, she did with paint and art. Yeah, yeah the paint. The artificer she painted icing. things and yeah, and then threw them out yeah, like the, the acid paintings. splash. She would yes. like paint, paint a green bubble. bubble. Paint yeah. bubbles. Yeah, so it's like whatever. That's one of the coolest things you can do. And it's not even artificers. It's not even secluded to artificers. You can do it with any spellcaster. Just make them like if your character would cast a spell this way and make their spell look like this, then do it. Unless your DM says no. Then you shouldn't play with that DM. Luckily, we're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and we never say no. There <laughs> is certain things where DMs like, if you're playing with like 
a random group that come together. Sometimes they do where it's like you guys stick to the book so nobody does anything overpowered because homebrew can get overpowered. If you're playing with a bunch of friends, then you can homebrew stuff. So so if you've never played D&D before, go to your local comic book store. If you see a group sitting down at the table playing Sit it, down with them. <laughs> sit down with them and play it. Hey, I've never played before. And don't know nothing. They it's are like probably going to kick you out. Yeah, because it's a little exhausting. As you can see, there's a lot to it. Think they're really weird and they're greasy. But when you get into it, you'll get pretty greasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, or you can just message us and we might play with you. Who knows? And we'll get pretty greasy. <laughs> <laughs> we will not get greasy. We only use KY around here. We don't, we don't use grease. Water-based. Yeah. That forehead's looking a little greasy, Tyler. <laughs> hey, man, I just took a shower. It's that Dr. Squatch. <laughs> I have to budget in Dr. Squatch. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. hey, not a sponsor. The deodorant is top tier. It the is deodorant? top tier. Stop. They sell it at Walmart? Yeah. It's $13 at Kroger, too. It's $11, it's $11 at Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. It's Tyler. legit. It's the only one that's they have worked. and like bought liquid body Stop. wash. Also. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. They have cologne now, too. Oh, yeah. They just came out with cologne for Valentine's Day. Yeah. I'm never going to get back to my herbal essence. Oh, no. Look, <laughs> I'm, I want to become a Squatch man. All right. Yeah. Again, we're not sponsored, but. Tyler's going to have me use two in one for the next three <laughs> years. <laughs> no, I love the shampoo we use now. The honey, whatever it is, that's sticky. Get your hair clean. Gross. It's not sticky. All right. <laughs> and that's the end of this side quest. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, definitely want to do more episodes on. D and D, I can. There's a lot I can do. If there's any suggestions or something that you want me to go more into, uh, just let us know. Comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. You can do it on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We don't get a lot, if any at all. So we'll see it. It will <laughs> respond, I promise. But I definitely want to get into it. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see into this side quest. Say that for a second time. See y'all later. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>